Mike Calloway is part of a new wave of politicians that have recently joined the House of Commons as a result of the October 2019 federal election. Running in the riding of Cape Breton Canso, held for 19 years by Roger Kuzner, Kellaway was able to hold on to the riding for the Liberal Party and has recently seen some new additions to his job description. To tell us more about that, we're pleased to welcome to Tell Ill 24-7, the new MP for Cape Breton Canso, Mike Kellaway. Mike, it's a pleasure to have you on. Pleasure to be here, Adam. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, look, we're very, very happy to have you here and have you tell us what it's like to cover this gargantuan riding of Cape Breton Canso, because it's a big one. I mean, you cover... Inverness and Richmond counties, the town of Port Hawkesbury, half of Guysborough County, nearly all of Antigonish out to the Heatherton Pumpkin area, and several parts of CBRM. Mm -hmm. So, uh, canvassing for the election and just being the MP now, uh, you've put a lot of miles in, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's a great question. It's one that's often asked to me, uh, no matter where we go. Uh, before the election, during the election, and after the election. So to put it in perspective, Adam, the size of this riding is almost equivalent to the size of the country of Lebanon, geographically speaking. So it's, it's a big riding, as you mentioned, five municipalities strong. Uh, it's a riding that's diverse uh, with uh, Acadian population, Mi'kmaq population, uh, and, and, and others throughout the riding. So, but what it is, it's a pleasure to go to communities on a consistent basis. And we've been going pretty hard, reaching out to communities, engaging communities, listening to individuals, organizations, community organizations, businesses, and all levels of government to really look at that word engagement and unpack it. And for me, to be an effective MP, you've got to walk the walk, but you also have to talk the talk. And you have to be there, you have to be engaged, you have to be knowledgeable, you have to show a commitment and not just talk about commitment. Well, you've been walking and talking and driving all over the riding since your election. You've held a number of mobile offices, mobile constituency offices in yes. various communities. We've seen you around here a number of times. How has that been working out for you so far? It's been an exceptional um, experience, number one. We didn't know what to expect. Um, we thought we would do two months of mobile offices and then evaluate it and see, you know, is it working? Does it need to be done differently, better, whatever the case may be? So what we can clearly say right here, right now, uh, as we tape this interview, is that our mobile offices have been a huge success in terms of numbers, in terms of a number of engagements, um, and just a general feeling in the community when you go in and they say, you are here, you do care, you are following up on your promise. And for me, I wouldn't want to do this any other way. You're not the MP just for one community. You're the MP for Pomquet, Arishat, Canso, Inverness, and Glace Bay, and all points in between. So for me, it's a different style of politics. And I said I would bring a new style of politics into play, one that focuses on engagement. And then I said, let's unpack that word engagement. I'm going to be in your community a lot. I said, get used to this face. <laughs> I wish it was a better face, folks, but get used to this face because I want to be a solutions provider. I want to be a problem solver. I can't do it alone. I need the community to be a part of it. And the community is rising to the challenge of not just talking about the issues, Adam, but talking about the opportunities and talking about where do we go from here, whether it is uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure and broadband, whether it is healthcare, whether it is small craft harbor. People are coming to me with ideas and I'm coming to them and it's because I'm engaging, I'm listening, and guess what? The community is gauging back and listening and I like that recipe for activity and, and, and results. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And this face has been in various <laughs> communities around Cape Breton Cancel with the mobile offices. Uh, we know you've been in Port Hawkesbury, yes. Inverness, Heatherton, and Guysboro, just as examples. Uh, are there any other spots that you're looking at in the short term uh, in terms of getting the mobile offices out? Oh, yes. So um, later in the month of February, we're going to announce the four locations for March. And so I can say that it will be a combination of um, Acadian and Mi'kmaq, mainland and Cape Breton. And so I don't want to divulge the, the, the names uh, because we're still looking for locations, um, uh, spaces. But I can say that this is something that's going to be ongoing. This is going to be no longer a pilot. This is who we are, what we do, and how we do it. And I can say that not only have we done the mobile office, but we're also looking at uh, a youth council. 
uh, a youth council that is made up of young people throughout the riding from Canso to Glace Bay. So we're working on uh, exploring and researching what are the best models for youth councils in a constituency. We don't want just a um, kind of hollow uh, approach to youth engagement. I want activity, I want results, I want advice, and I want tangible outcomes. And um, I'm very excited that in the spring we'll unveil the Youth Council. There'll be a process by which you apply to the Youth Council, but I'm looking for a rich diversity of young people from a variety of backgrounds and viewpoints. And it's not just a liberal thing. It's not just a, a Tory thing or whatever the case may be. I want young people, I want their ideas, I want their backgrounds, whether it's on the environment or social programs. I want a youth council that looks at uh, docking up and aligning to existing community organizations to help build capacity in community. This is an activist MP, this is an activist office, and it's a, a, a focus on activity and results focused. Can we pick up on the idea of youth engagement sure. just for a little bit? Because sure. it's been shown that under 25 voters are some of the most active in Canada right now. Yes. And many have pointed to them as being one of the key reasons that your boss, Justin Trudeau, was elected prime minister in 2015 and re-elected in 2019. Yes. How do you build on that? How do you keep youth engaged? And I know you're active on social media. I've seen you on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter Instagram, yeah. the whole shot. Yeah. But is that enough? Do you look at video conferencing? Yeah. Uh, how do you get out and get youth and their issues involved? I, I think it's a, a, a whole host of things. It's much like anything in life. It's not one way to engage, uh, but multiple ways. So yes, social media is one. But also to say, hey, come work with me. Come work with me on projects, ideas, uh, opportunities. I want to hear what you have to say. And by the way, I am not going to ask you to come to my Dominion office. I'm going to be in Pomcat. I'm going to be at Isle Madame. I'm going to be in Shetty Camp. I want to hear from you. And then link uh, um, uh, young people throughout this riding uh, via technology and also spend a little bit of money to bring people together where good ideas happen. And I still believe as much as we rely on technology, we have to rely on our abilities to establish relationships that are authentic. So in this interview, I'm authentic with you. Uh, but in a lot of interviews, I'm guessing, I'm only guessing, that sometimes you can feel someone is not, they're giving you the answer, but they're not necessarily, re it's not a real moment. And for me, I want these moments to be real because the stakes are high. The stakes are high in terms of out-migration, um, a lost opportunity in terms of startups, things of that nature. But I think we are turning it around. But I think we can turn it around more when, when we can go to young people uh, to say, my name is Mike Kellaway, I'm your MP, and I need your ideas. But more than that, I need your sweat equity. I need you to help your community grow. If that's an hour a week, a half an hour a week of volunteering uh, to not just build up your resume, but to showcase your skills to your community so we can build our community up. And that's what we need. And I think the, the opportunity, the bully pulpit, as Teddy Roosevelt would have said, the, the opportunity for an MP is to say, let's bring young people together with this group and this group and this group, and let's see what happens as a result. And let's make an honest effort to community development uh, and youth development and any other pieces of development. And let's make an honest effort to bring young people in. And let's not use the same stuff that I've been hearing over and over again, that millennials are lazy. I can tell you straight up, the people that I work with on my campaign, a good number of them were millennials. And they are so <laughs> impressive. They are so commitment, committed about the future of Cape Breton, Northeastern Nova Scotia. They have ideas, they have experience, they want to demonstrate it. And you give them the chance, and you give them the runway, and, and sometimes it's a kind of co-mentoring uh, philosophy. Sometimes, uh, and I can tell you straight up, in, in, in during the election, I learned a lot about environmentalism from, uh, from the people that were on my campaign. Uh, they taught me. And I think that's a two-way street. And we got to remember, we have some talented, talented young people that are millennials or Generation Y. I'm Generation X, so which means I'm old. Uh, but be open to new things. Be open to new ideas and new relationships. That means engage young people. But you got to be sincere, and you got to be uh, got to be real. 
Well, I want, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to have that kind of lead into my next topic. Sure. Because here in Richmond County, we've seen some success over the last two, three years about having youth work directly with seniors. Mm. And I look at the work at the Seniors Take Action yes. Coalition here in Richmond County, and as well about the Mind, Body, Spirit projects yes. that worked to bridge the generations together and to have youth interacting with seniors. Uh, the over 60 set makes up a huge percentage of your riding's population, uh, particularly yeah. here in the Strait of Canso. So what is your focus on how to best help them, but also to empower them to be able to continue to serve in their communities? Well, when it comes to seniors, um, uh, I think, again, here's a huge asset that we have as an island and a, as a as a northeastern Nova Scotia, where we have a huge number of seniors that have still a lot to offer uh, for their community. So what I'd like to see is um, uh, a more of an effort to, to actually tap into federal funds. We have a New Horizons program that provides 25000 up to $25,000 for programs, uh, education, uh, leisure, uh, sport, but also uh, infrastructure and capital projects. So what can we be doing to not just access the minds of the seniors, but also uh, look at the seniors and youth groups working on projects together to better uh, this area. The issue is not funding. The issue is commitment, ideas, and curiosity. The curiosity that comes with looking at what would happen if we bring uh, Rotarians, uh, kins kinsette, kinettes, kinsmen, young people, seniors clubs together and say, what's one project we can do together? What's one thing we can do together? Let's break down these silos that have been built over much of the 20th century and now the 21st century. Let's break down the silos of ideas. Let's break down the silos of um, individualism and let's look at how we can work together. So I believe there's plenty of room to look at seniors programs and youth programs as one. What's a project? I'm not sure. But we will get that when we bring people into a room. As a community developer, uh, I often, when I, when, when, when I bring communities together, uh, I will bring them in a room and we will have a coffee and it's a discussion on what, what, what's your interest, what are your assets, what are your challenges, what keeps you up at night, and I guarantee the same groups that are there have the same. And then I say, what's one thing? One thing we can do together. What is one thing? And then sometimes that you know, spurs on a second thing and a third thing and a fourth thing. So with seniors, we have, um, I love the concept, and this is just an idea, but I talked about this too with uh, Mayor, Bizen, uh, Mayor uh, Brenda Beaton Chisholm, is that wouldn't it be great if we had a seniors college uh, through funding through New Horizons, uh, whereby communities throughout the riding are linked up by technology uh, and courses are offered uh, free of charge uh, uh, that, that uh, these programs and courses are of interest to seniors. Um, and, and what if we link that through technology and also uh, co-learning spaces? We have so much to offer. A seniors college could be a leader in Canada uh, from a Cape Breton, Northeastern Nova Scotia perspective. Just an idea uh, uh, of mine, uh, but that's one I think that Maybe some group is out there that takes that and runs with it and says, you know what? We're a senior group, but we'd also like to work with the youth group on this seniors college. Yeah. And you know something, it's interesting you bring that up because uh, a lot of the reason that people in the straight area know who you are is because of the work you've done with the Nova Scotia Community College over the past 11 yes. years uh, and spending roughly half of that time at straight area campus in Port Hawkesbury. You've gotten a good look at what that campus can offer, oh. and particularly in terms of marine and ocean oh, programs. Absolutely. So is that a key to developing the economy for the Strait of Canso? Is that something you feel you can advance sure. as the Member of Parliament? I, I, absolutely. I think and when it comes to the Strait of Canso, um, and if you look at um, the Nova Scotia Community College, people need to know that we are a leader, a world leader right now in nautical programming, oceans-related programming, and it's being done in the Strait, uh, in the Strait campus in Port Hawkesbury. What also uh, is, is, I think, important for, for, for your uh, viewers to know is that uh, we're in the midst of creating a residence behind the campus. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be now an international hub for marine programming activity. But I think we don't have to stop there. I think when you look at the east coast of the island and certainly northeastern Nova Scotia and the west coast, 
we have so many assets when it comes to oceans programming, whether it is the fishery, uh, whether it's ocean research. We can look at the Port Hawkesbury campus as um, a node, a, a hub for oceans programming and oceans research. Um, one of the great things um, that I can certainly speak to of, uh, of is the work that's being done by people like uh, Vivek Saxnia, who is the uh, academic chair for the Nautical, and Tom Gunn and others. The work they are doing is amazing. Not only are they uh, building a residence, not only are they bringing people throughout the, throughout the world to come to the campus to take the cadet programs and the other specialized training, um, but I mean they're looking at new research in terms of oceans, oceans-related uh, programming that will impact industries throughout the world. I think we can capitalize on things such as becoming an international hub of excellence when it comes to marine training, safety training. We have people on either side of the coast in northeastern Nova Scotia that can play a fundamental part in that. Again, it's connecting the dots. This is about collaboration and coordination and, and, and awareness, knowing what assets we have, knowing what people and groups are doing it, and combining the two. And I think that's where an MP can play a fundamental role. Because you're around the riding. You see the good things that are happening or the challenges, but you see the faces of those that are uh, leading the charge. And you can bring them together and say, did you ever think about looking at uh, oceans-related training in, uh, in Inverness County? Because this group is doing this. And so you can be a facilitator, a steward of connection and I think that's exceptionally important, and I think it's a role that comes natural for me uh, over time. I didn't get here overnight. I made a lot of mistakes. Some say I make a, st I, some say I make a mistake a day, or two, or three, but it's because I try. You, when you take swings, you try. Uh, someone often told, uh, you know, someone has told me this. Uh, a friend of mine told me this rather, uh, that if you look at a uh, Hall of Fame uh, hitter uh, who hits 300, it's that person is instantaneously in the Hall of Fame. If you break it down, that means that person hit three out of 10 pitches. Doesn't sound like a lot, of it, but it is. So the more we swing, the more we hit. It doesn't have to be 10 out of 10. It doesn't have to be eight out of 10. But if you're, I'll tell you this, if we're not taking our swings, uh, we're, not gonna hit, we're not gonna hit the ones we need. Well, since you're using baseball metaphors, okay. uh, you have stepped up to the plate uh, on two occasions over the past couple of months. Uh, you have been named to two standing committees in Parliament, and I'd like to address each of these separately. Sure. You've been named to the standing committees for health and for justice. First of all, just your immediate reaction at being named to these spots uh, just a few months after being elected. Uh, an incredible honour. Um, no different than when I was elected and that feeling hasn't left, uh, you know, nor will it leave, that it's incredibly humbling and, and it's a great honor to represent your riding in Ottawa. When it comes to committees, uh, my understanding normally an individual gets a committee. Uh, well, I have two, uh, but I think that is uh, the result of, of confidence. Uh, confidence and the background that I have, whether, whether it's uh, uh, working, working with young people uh, that some may say leans to the justice side, or working uh, as a volunteer to bring doctors here to, uh, to the riding. So for me, it's a great honor, it's a great privilege to, to <clears throat> certainly be uh, on the committee that represents uh, the entire nation, but also the chance to look at items such as uh, Mental health, youth mental health, doctor retention, doctor recruitment, uh, bridging credentials that will enable people who want to come here uh, to train up and practice here. If you're, you know, if you're in Germany and you want to come here, it, it's a bit arduous to ensure that your credentials line up to our credentials. So to make it more fluid, make it easier, maintain the quality, maintain the quality, but make it easier. Uh, it's a great honor. That's a great privilege. I mean, we've, I'm now knee deep into the health committee because of the coronavirus. We started very early. We're the first committee to be set up. And on the justice committee, um, again, uh, to put it in perspective, uh, my understanding anyway, is that the committee is made up of pri predominantly all lawyers and then me. Is that intimidating by any chance? Or? Uh, no, uh, it's not. Um, I look at it as a learning opportunity to learn from lawyers, but I think it's an opportunity for them to learn from me in terms of another lens by which to look at key topics, key potential policies, key potential laws, whether it's 
focusing on the, uh, uh, the United Nations for Indigenous Rights, whether it's focusing on uh, community justice centers. I think it's an opportunity for a co-learning journey, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to that. I could say on the health committee, uh, it, again, it's a very, um, uh, I'm very honored to be asking questions, for example, of uh, the head of uh, public health in Canada to talk about uh, uh, the coronavirus and asking, following up, follow, following up with questions such as, are we prepared? Uh, uh, how integrated is our system uh, in terms of not just Health Canada, but Transport Canada and global affairs? I've asked a lot of questions. Um, I know the committee uh, uh, tends to smile when I ask questions because it's usually about six in a row. Uh, I ask a lot of questions uh, it's because I care, and I want the people in my riding to know that I'm there asking the questions that I think are important to them and their families, whether it's in this riding or other ridings uh, where they may have extended family, friends, and uh, are looking for someone that is going to carry, carry the water all the way. And in that respect, I wanted to ask you a little bit about a guest that we actually had earlier on the show here on Tell Hill 24-7, oh, yes. Taylor Linloff uh, from Port Hawkesbury. And you met with her just a few days ago in yeah. terms of discussing her potential role for a national autism strategy. And can you tell me a little bit about what that conversation was about and what happens wow. from there? Uh, Adam, I got I to gotta say, when we talked a little bit of, uh, off camera, and I can say um, it's an absolute pleasure, honor, to not only speak to Taylor, but to listen to Taylor. This person, person is passionate, committed, authentic, and wanting to do good work around a national autism strategy. Uh, an exceptional, exceptional person. And uh, so we met at the Maritime Inn. And uh, I think the, the 20 minute meeting might have been 45 minutes because of me. Oh, really? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Um, and I said to her, we are going to work together. Not a shadow of a doubt. I said, when it comes to the health committee or the national autism strategy or programs we could be doing in terms of awareness in our riding and outside of our riding, I want to be able to be the person that says they work with Taylor. The reason why is that I think she's destined for so many great things. But I think when you look to leadership, we often look to leadership and, you know, we look at uh, more of the, you know, the sage on the stage and, uh, that, you know, with Taylor, it's a sage on the stage, but there is real, real leadership qualities that good things are going to happen. And as an MP, I want to support her in that because I think her approach to engagement, her, pro her approach to education, uh, and just her proactive approach in general warrants a serious collaboration and I can say without a shadow of a doubt, she'll have that with me and my staff because we were overwhelmed by her leadership and will be overwhelmed. And I, and I, I can tell your viewers this. Remember Taylor's name because there's going to be some profound things happen, uh, good things that are going to happen that maybe sometimes uh, we will um, we'll have our own challenges in that. Uh, but, but I think she's the right person. Uh, and with me, I am more than ecstatic to be a part of that with her. Oh, that's terrific. So you mentioned leadership, and sure. we're now coming into a new era of leadership in this parliament, in this House of Commons. Sure. It is a minority parliament. Uh, you've been elected as part of the governing party. Yeah. Does that affect the way that you approach any of these issues on your role on the standing committees or in your role just simply in the seat for Cape Breton Canso? Do you go in a little less aggressively than you might if the Liberals were in a majority situation? Mm -hmm. Or do you just simply say, you know what, I was elected to represent Cape Breton Canso and that's what I'm going to do? Well, I can say, um, I mean, when I was running, People would say, well, you know, whether you're a liberal, a progressive, conservative, conservative, NDP, green, or whatever the case may be, you got to toe the party line. You don't have a voice. Uh, you're just a puppet on a string kind of thing. And I said, well, I think I'm going to work my, 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 my heart out to, to dispel that, uh, that belief. Um, so my approach to, to, to politics is or my approach to relationships. 
whether I was uh, running my own business, um, whether it was working for, the, for Cape Breton University or Nova Scotia Community College or my volunteer work. It's around building coalitions. It's around building relationships with people that you may disagree with 50% of the time or 60% of the time to find those hot spots that you can work together on. So you'll appreciate this. So my first day uh, in, the, in the chamber uh, before it started, I walked in. Uh, and I looked to the right side where the opposition were, and I started introducing myself uh, to everybody. Uh, and I got to chat with a lot of conservatives out west who knew certain spots in Cape Breton, uh, NDP. Uh, the Greens are on our side of the, of, of, uh, of the House. So I chatted with the three from, uh, that represent the Greens. And, and I do that uh, not because it's just uh, a gimmicky thing. I really believe that you can establish relationships early uh, when people identify who you are and you have some commonalities. A lot of times we just build these walls right away. And look, it's a, it's, it's a minority government. Um, uh, the role of the opposition is to critique, uh, to uh, provide alternative policy, uh, and also to be somewhat uh, you know, antagonistic at times. Uh, and that's part of the British parliamentary system. But for me, I approached that I'm in there for Cape Breton Canso. I'm there for Cape Breton Nova, uh, uh, in northeastern Nova Scotia. And I have taken, um, I guess, um, a bit of a um, plan or a bit of a, a history from Alan Jay. Now, Alan Jay, we all know Alan Jay, and for those young people out there that don't know Alan Jay, Google Alan Jay. He's you not know, just an airport in Port Hastings. He's not. He's a phenomenal person, a phenomenal and well-schooled politician, and that's a good thing, folks. Um, and so my understanding is that when Alan Jay, when he was uh, an MP, a minister, or even when he was a senator, no matter where he was, he could be in Geneva, which he was, negotiating trade deals or whatever the case may be, he always had in his pocket a list of community needs, concerns, and callbacks. And he would say, you know, thank you, we're going to take a break at this, uh, if it was, the meeting was in Geneva. And he would call Isabel McDonald about her water issue. That's no different than my ethos, what I'm about. I'm not comparing myself to Alan Jay. I would never do that. But the reason why I'm here, the reason why I decided to run at the age of 49, is that I want to give back to a region a riding of people that have given so much to me. And I'm up there to advocate for them. I'm, ad I'm there to advocate for more money for mental health. I'm up there to advocate for more money for homelessness. I'm up there to say, you know what? Uh, Cape Breton in northeastern Nova Scotia is often said in magazines that it's one of the number one regions in Canada for tourism. So let's have world-class infrastructure in, the, in terms of broadband and cell phone coverage to match that to match the, 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 uh, those stories. That's why I'm there. I, but, I'm, I, but I'm there to, to provide new ideas and new approaches. I, well, one of the many things that happened early on was that ministers would say to, uh, to the rest of the caucus, I'm going to be in the lobby at 1 o'clock if anybody wants to chat. Well, if you can only imagine, everybody wants to chat. Yes. So um, on this day, it was uh, the Minister of Infrastructure, Catherine McKenna, and uh, there was myself, and there was probably about, I don't know, 20 MPs from Ontario. And everybody was you know, going around saying, here's where our needs are, here's where our needs are. And I said to her, I'm not sure if you've been to Cape Breton Canso. I'm not sure if you've been to um, Guysboro County or Richmond County or Inverness County or, or the CBRM. Um, I'm not sure you've been to Isle of the Dam. But let me tell you a little story about the resiliency of these people and the resiliency of the businesses, and the resiliency of families, and the reason why we care, and why we believe that uh, investment in infrastructure is so important for small businesses. So I didn't go in there with a direct ask. I, I went in there to say, let me paint you a picture of what I believe is today's Cape Breton Canso. Uh, and it's not all negative, but there are challenges, but there's also opportunities. And she just went, thanks a lot. The other example I will give you is, uh, uh, again, small group of 20 MPs uh, talking to the Minister of Health. And I was the last person to speak. And 
I spoke uh, uh, what many would say in that room is very passionately about the need for the federal government to invest in provinces in terms of health care on those items that I mentioned earlier around doctor retention and recruitment uh, to ensure that every community has access to primary health care people and teams. And I explained to her that uh, in Cape Breton Canso, in many places in Cape Breton Canso, the length of time for a young person to see a mental health professional is on average 424 days. That is unacceptable. That means something to me. I get passionate about it. I, get, I, I, I know many moms and dads who've talked to me about specific cases in their families. We need to do better than that. And I also think that the prov provincial government understands that as well. So let's work with the provincial government to take that wait time and blow it up. And let's get the necessary resources on mental health that is needed right now. I think the federal government can play a role in that. I know the provincial government is doing a lot of innovative things to try to rectify that. Let's work together on it. And I get very passionate about health care. I get very passionate when I think of my mom who did not have a doctor during a conserv progressive conservative government, an NDP government, and a liberal government. My mom is now 79 years of age. She has an illness. And there are many times that I think, what if she had that family doctor? That's a lot of what ifs, but that's real to me. This is real to me. It's real to you. So we have so much to do um, that sometimes I wake up at night around 3 in the morning going, I got a checklist of 50 things. But there's no place that I'd rather be than be your person in Ottawa uh, advocating for you, in some cases fighting for you, in some cases uh, building bridges for you. That's what it's about for me. And so, um, I, again, I, you know, I'm, I'm so honored by it. I'm so privileged by it. When I walk from 6.30 in the morning to uh, where I'm staying and I cross Parliament Hill to go to work in my office, there's not a minute that I am not grateful and that I'm not committed to making that day the best day for Cape Breton Cancel. Well, we really appreciate you bringing the stories, the people, and the issues of Cape Breton Canso to Ottawa. And we've greatly appreciated you bringing your stories and observations right here to the Tell Hill Studios. So thank you so much for being thank on you. Tell Hill 24-7. Ah, thank you very much, and congratulations on the new show. This is wonderful. Thank you very much, okay. and we hope to have you back again sometime. Anytime. I love Tell Hill.